Thank you for joining me on Lades in Tech. Make sure you subscribe because I got lots of other great videos and tutorials on RS Logic Supply Finder. So make sure you subscribe. Thanks for joining me on Ladies in Tech. This video is going to be on using your timer off instruction. So the setup we have here, we have a MicroLogix 1100 PLC and we have some inputs and outputs. We got a normally open green push button, a normally closed black push button, a red and a green light. So this will be the setup I'll use for demonstrating this instruction and its use. So right now let's hop over to the software and we'll begin putting a timing off delay function into our ladder logic. All right, I have the RS Logix 500 open. So here I'm going to create some logic using my time, timer off instruction. We can never put any logic on the end rung. So first thing we're going to do is go to our user tab. You can see here, we're going to add a rung and I'm going to go to my timer slash counter and you can see I have my timer off delay. And I just simply push that or I could drag it, whichever you please. Um, and I have that instruction now on that rung. This timer, I'm going to give it a name. All timers are stored in a T4 format for its storage of its location of its memory. So T4 colon 1 is what we're going to give this one as a name. Let's do a time base of um, milliseconds. So let's count milliseconds. It's more refined than a second. Let's give it a preset of uh, three and a half seconds. So that'd be 3,500. And our accumulated value we're not going to touch. But we can also do in here, let's do um, change, let's do our description here and let's give our timer a name and call it three, uh, three, We'll do 3,500 second. We'll call it that. So that later on in the program, if I need to refer to it, it's really nice and easy to know what it's counting. Now we need some logic in front of this guy for when it's supposed to count. So I'm going to go to my user bits and I'm going to put my green normally open push button as my logic in front of this timer as to when it's supposed to begin timing. So I'm going to call it my green PB, so for push button, and I'm just going to say, as a description, it's a green push button, and I'm just going to go N, O, for normally open, and go OK. I'm going to do my check mark, you can see here that it is properly addressed, it actually is going to a location, that's the part number for my fixed PLC. So this right now, the way it's set up is that when the green push button is pressed, it will begin timing. So let's do some more logic here so that we're gonna use the done bit associated with the T4 colon one so you can see what happens. So we'll put this guy in here and we're gonna go, we're gonna address it to the timer that we wanna look at which is our T4 colon, colon one and we're gonna go DN for done. And we go okay and you can see that the name is matches the name to this timer, so it's associated. And when that bit is true, we are going to turn on the red uh, pilot light. Okay, and I'm just going to call it red light. Oops, red light. And we're going to go OK. So let's download this program. The system comms. Make sure our communication is hooked up properly. And here we go here, that's the PLC we want, and we're gonna download the him. Yes, we wanna do that. We're in remote run. Are we okay to go program? We're gonna say yes, and we're gonna go online. So we're online with him right now. You can see that we got green on either side. And now let's see how this instruction reacts. So I'm gonna push that green push button, and hold it down, and the time has not begun timing. Okay, this is a timer off delay. So when that logic in front of it's true, it does not time. When I let go, so once that sees the true default transition, it begins timing. You can see that the output is still on until 3.5 seconds. All right, so with using a timer off delay, we have to remember that you have to have a signal that's on, so it shows that it's on, and then it begins timing once it goes off. So once it goes off, begins that timing sequence, and then the output will turn off once it is done. All right, so that there, and I, I'm gonna show you here how it works with the actual real world devices as well. All right, so we got the 
the program with the timing off delay downloaded and this is using the done bit off of there. I'm going to push the button. The light comes on right away and then it's going to begin timing once I let go and then the light will go off after three and a half seconds. So we push it. It's timing. It's not timing yet. And there we go. So I changed the instruction here to a timer timing. So you can see how that works. So I'm gonna push the green push button. You see right away the timer goes back to zero and it's done. But it won't begin timing until I let go of the start button. So we're gonna let go of our start button. You can see it's on right here, I'm pushing it and let go. Now it's timing and the timer timer bit's true and the light's on until it reaches 3500 microseconds. Let's do that again. Begins timing and then shuts off. So very similar to your done bit. And I'll show you that on the components as well. So this is using the timer timing with the timing off instruction. I push our start, and I let go, and it's timing, and that's why it's on. Until it's done timing, it shuts off. And there you go again. I now change the instruction for the in front of the light to the enable, so we're going to use a T4 colon 1 enabled of this timer off delay and we'll show how that works. So the enable bit should be true whenever the logic, which is in this rung, the push button in front of the timer is true. So I'll show you how that works there. And I'm pushing the push button, the red light's on, I let go of the push button, the red, the red light goes off. So. Whenever the push button is true, the enable is true, which turns on the red light. So that's how that one works, and I'll show you how that works on the real world device as well. All right, we're going to show you how the enable bit for the timing off delay works. So we have enable bit used to turn on this light after three and a half seconds, but since the enable bit is only true, or is always true, when the logic in front is on. So whenever we just press the button, that's when that light's going to be on. So the timing really does not take any effect here in this situation when you use your enabled. Okay, now the next thing I would like to explain to you is how to use the bits now with using an examine if open instruction. So let's change this instruction. We're going to call it examine if open. Okay, and let's use our timer done bit. So you can see now you got your examine if open. Check mark that and I'm just going to download this. So right now this instruction has a logic level of 1. It is high because over here the done bit is low. So this instruction once again is like its opposite state of its logic level. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and press the green push button and we'll see the timer begins timing and that done bit I haven't released the push button yet. Remember, watch this right now. So I haven't released that push button yet. You can see that there, it's still green. And it is done. Since it's done, it's a high logic level one on that done bit. Down here with the instruction, with the normally um, examine if open, it is now low. If I let go of the green push button, the timer starts timing. This is still low. Once it's finished, this done bit goes low and hence this goes high and the light comes back on. All right, we'll do this now with the timer timing and the enable bits. You can see how those work with using the examine if open. So I changed the instruction to the timer timing. You can see right now that the timer is not timing. So this bit is low, but we're using the examine if open, so it is gonna be high. So the actual timer timing bit is low at this moment. <laughs> So you can see here, under T4 colon 1, the timer timing bit is actually low. And since we're using the examine if open command, which is your opposite state, it was giving a high signal there. And the light's on. So we're going to depress that green push button so you can see. And it hasn't started timing yet because I've not released the green push button. So I'm going to release that now begins timing, so that is high, which in turn makes this low until it's done timing, 
and the red light comes back on. I'll let you see that again. So I press the green green or the green push button. I let go, it begins timing. And when it's done, timing, the red light comes back on. And then I'm gonna change this to the enable now. The instructions have been changed to the enable bed. And currently right now, there's nothing enabling this timer. If we go back to the memory storage location for these guys at T4, you can see since we have two four pull and one, the enable bit is low. But since we're using the examine if open, it is high here. So the opposite of low is high. So we got high right here, which we have our lights on. So we should see if we push this screen push button, this timer should um, not start timing until I, we let go, right? So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna push the green push button. You can see now your enable bit is high. Right, since that timer is high, and as soon as I let go, it's not enabled anymore. Let's do that again. So we're gonna push the green push button. So that makes the timer enabled. As soon as I let it go, it's no longer enabled, and the light comes right back on. So basically, when I push the green push button, it's on. When I let go, it's off. Enabled, not enabled. Okay. That concludes my tutorial on the TOF instruction using RS Logics 500. Don't forget to subscribe because next I'm going to show you how to do online edits. So if you don't subscribe, you're going to miss out. So please make sure you subscribe so that you keep up on all the exercises and tutorials that I'm running for you on RS Logics 500. Thank you and have yourself a great day. Thank you.